it's me again. Oh my gosh, I'm so tired. It's like 8.40 and I've been going all day and now I finally have time to look at things. What happened today? Well, today I think the audit was completed, I think, because Meta released their amended 10K, which talked primarily about the Hazel Project. Which, for some reason, was left out of the previous 10K. And maybe they forgot to add it in, and they're like, whoops-a-doodle. But they included this one report about it, which makes me want to go, hmm, is the audit done? I want to say yes, because why did they, re like, choose to release it now? And if you look on the date of this letter, that date's very recent, I think the audit's possibly done, so I'm going to say maybe. Step one might be complete. Uh, the next step you'll see is, you know, SEC says, okay, we, we may or may not hear about that. And then you're going to see like a S1. And about the same time the S1, you might see an 8K from Meta. That's what I think. Usually that happens. You'll see an 8K. But Meta made the amended 10K today and it had the discussion on it about the Hazel Project. Now, unfortunately, um, this is where you have both good news and bad news. So let's deal with the bad news is that it's not worth that much. 1M, again, as Elephant Analytics pointed out, 1M does indicate a thousand. Two M's means a million, but one M does mean 1,000. And so it's with that that this isn't that much. You know, it's only worth like $2.8 million net present value. So it's very disheartening. And if you were to math that out into like an actual dividend with 74% interest and... 165 million shares, you would get like a penny a share. It's it's very low. It's very small. The net present value of these wells was, remember, this is in millions. So thousands would, or this is in thousands. So this would be, okay. So if you have reserve wise, According to this study, this appraisal, uh, two million, two point eight nine six million essentially. And Torchlight gets seventy four percent of that, so that's our revenue interest is seventy four percent in that. And then you multiply seventy four percent times the net present value, and you get you know one point nine nine seven million. Again, this is given in thousands. Times a holdback dividend of 0.9 uh, is 1.797 million. And then you divide that by 165 million. And you're left with, guess what? Just over a penny. That's a penny. That's not much, right? That's like nothing. It's bust. Now, there might be some teensy tiny oil company that would love to have this. Great. But it amounts to like pennies. So dividend wise, it's not much. But... If you do apply that 2.8 million or whatever to other things like, let's say, the or Grande, you know that could that could pay some people. That could at least develop some things for the or Grande. Not even a well's worth, but it's something. Uh, again, there's not too much, sadly, in the Flying Bee ranches uh, of the Hazel Project. Now, that does seem very sad. My hopes for the Or Grande is very high because we're talking at least 3.2 billion barrels worth. And this actually really proves my math and it makes me super excited because this like really hits home for the math. Because look, look at this number, 2.896. The value, right? Check this out, check this out. This makes me excited. 2.896 million for the value, net present value. I've done net present values on the Ora Grande. Go see my video, net present value of the Ora Grande, where I calculated it out to be like about 15 to 17 billion. 
Okay. So these, again, were based on an average of $63 WTI. Okay. It was the 2021 average. So even if you account for this year, it'd be a little bit more because oil has been substantially higher since January. We're into the fifth month of the year now and oil has been pretty darn high, which is great for our dividend. It might be a bit higher than a penny because, again, this was based on the 2021 average, which wasn't all that great. So it's been about four months since then, and the rolling average has thusly increased substantially. But let's look at the, my math now, the roller pigeon math. So according to this appraisal, there's 346,000 barrels of oil, right? And so we take around, like I said, about 95, I think is about a good fluctuating price minus cost of goods sold. You could do 100 minus 40 to go on the upside for more fracking or whatever. But basically 95 minus 35 cost of goods sold. It's 35 average cost of goods sold. I've upped it. I've followed the other people's models, other oil companies' models a similar size for 2022. If you're Exxon, it's going to be less. If your Continental is going to be less, but $95 minus $35 cost of goods sold, you're left with $65 times the multiplier, 12%, you're left with $7.8 per barrel. That's, that's basically, you know, the cut of it, right? Like, like the oil, oil on the ground, right? The oil on the ground multiplier, 7.8. 346,000 barrels of oil times 7.8 is 2.98 million. That's in thousands. So 2,698 in thousands would be 2.698 million. 2.698 million. Check it out. And the reserves, 2.896 million. Look how close that is. Royal Pigeons math is pretty close. I'm excited. I'm excited. So this was a bust, but I think the Oro Grande is going to be grand. It's the big gold in Spanish. Uh, this checks out for my math. I've done the NPVs on the Oro Grande. I'm very excited because, like, this is like, woo, look at that math. That checks, like, Roller Pigeons method based on estimated reserves and an actual, like, appraisal guy. That's pretty darn close. So, I'm very excited about that. In other news, um, I heard Allie. I haven't gotten to watch it today because I've been so busy. But I heard Allie, our friend Allie from Trading Secrets. Shout out to Allie. He says that Chevron might be interested. And actually, over the weekend, I was looking at Chevron earnings. Indeed, Chevron is high on earnings for Q1. Chevron plans to expand further into the Permian Basin. Uh, Chevron did beat earnings Q1 of 2022, like many other oil companies did. Chevron was also one of the companies that was in the running for the Shell asset, but ConocoPhillips bought it. So Chevron was one of those companies, along with ConocoPhillips and Devon, but they were beat out. It is possible that Chevron could be a buyer, but at this point it's in the rumor stage, Rumors was a very good album by Fleetwood Mac. If you haven't checked it out, I highly suggest it. It's like one of my favorite albums is Rumors. I like Fleetwood Mac, and this is like probably one of their best albums. But uh, it's very possible that Chevron could as they're looking to expand, and a lot of big companies are like beating their earnings right now. So it could get very interesting. We are certainly at a time where companies definitely want to expand on their oil. And even though the Hazel project wasn't that great, there wasn't that much oil in it, it's excited about my math. And when I know the quantities, like how close it is to what the appraisal is. So I'm, I'm very excited to see. Um, and at least the 10 K's out, which means that the audit could very well be done. If the audit's done, I think we'll go forward. I personally don't see anything until after Meta's Q1, I think. Well, now that the that the amended 10K is out, you'll see Meta's Q1. 
results any day. They have eight days to file, so you'll see those anytime. After Meta's Q1 results come, I think that's when you'll see the S1 as long as it's completed and the SEC says okay to the audits, all that. As long as there's like no amendments to that S1, I think, you know, things will get exciting. The Hazel project is probably, yeah, I agree with Elephant Analytics here why Master Sam McCabe didn't really exercise their options to buy it because not too much was really there. But it isn't to say that somebody else might want it. And that's not to say that the Orgrande doesn't have anything in it. Because Orgrande has been studied a lot more extensively. And we know the reserves in that. Whereas the reserves in this are like really a best guess. It does say that the wells are good for 22 years on this report. Uh, but then again, you're not producing too much if it's, you know, a total of 346,000 barrels over 22 years. What is that? I mean, you're talking like on average because there's two wells there. 7,863. Though the one well has a 14 year life and the other one has about a 22 year life. So the other one's life is about a third shorter. Maybe it's left handed. I don't know. Okay, guys, that's the analysis for today. Again, it's don't get too excited about this. I would more or less get excited because it's these steps. 1M does mean 1,000. I have to agree with Elephant Analytics on this point. But my hopes for the Ora Grande still is very high because I know the amount of oil that's in there. I'm not too sure yet about the gas. I'm going to, again, I told people I would study more about the gas, so I'm trying to look into that. To put a value in the gas, and I've been reading about how to evaluate gas a bit more. Uh, but I really like how, you know, the math, you know, of what it's in there, what was evaluated price-wise by the appraiser. And what my math says, which is this number here, that's pretty good. So I'm very excited about my math. Uh, that to me, that's the exciting part. And my hopes the Ora Grande still remain high. As time goes on, we will see. That's it for today, guys. I will see you soon. Goodbye.